everyone here on Stained Glass Cuts. In this video I'm going to show you how to make my stained glass polygon cutter. I've simplified the woodworking skills needed by using readily available dimensional wood. Here are the materials I'll be using. One half inch by three quarter inch piece of dimensional pine. One and a half inch also by three quarter inch. Two and a half inch by three quarter inch, a two foot by four foot piece of MDF that's three quarters of an inch thick, a 12 inch MDF circle, three quarters of an inch thick, a lazy Susan. two overly used glass cutters, two 18 inch centering rulers, the Rockler T-Track system, a 1 8 inch thick aluminum bar that's one inch wide, a 1 16th inch thick aluminum angle that's half inch on one side and three quarters of an inch on the other. Five sixteenth stainless steel washers. Number six five eighth inch pan head sheet metal screws. Number ten five eighth inch pan head sheet metal screws, number six five eighth inch wood screws, some number eight one and five eighth inch construction screws, one eighth inch steel pop rivets, some drawer liner, and heavy-duty anti-skid pads for the feet. That's what... As for the tools and supplies I'll be using, I've got a metal right angle, a hacksaw, a cross-cut saw, a drill, a pop rivet tool, a centering protractor or ruler, some miscellaneous bits on the small end, a straight edge, a metal rat tail file, a flat file for metal, a Phillips screwdriver, a 7 8 inch paddle bit, actually a 3 quarter would be ideal, couldn't find mine, a prick punch, a countersink, a mix of clamps, an L Ultra fine point sharpie, some wood glue, and some stain blocker, and a brush. To start, I cut my dimensional wood into 18 and a half inch lengths, two of each size wood. For the MDF, it's been cut to 18 and a half inches by 17 and a quarter inches. If you ask, most major hardware stores like Home Depot or Lowe's will cut the MDF to size. Now, I'll take two of the widest pieces and glue them together.
Well then, making sure that the ends are lined up. I'll take my clamps and clamp them together. Clamp them together nice and snugly. And leave them to dry. Next, I'll put the four non-skid feet onto the MDF rectangle, one in each corner. The holes for the feet are one inch in on each side on each corner. I've marked the spot to be drilled so I'll drill a pilot hole. Center my foot. And screw it in place. and repeat for the remaining three feet. With the feet on and the MDF flipped over, using one of the centering rulers, I'll mark the center of both 18 and a half inch sides. That's the beauty of the centering ruler. I mean the center. And I'll mark both sides and then I'll draw a line through these two marks. As you'll see later, this is a very important line. Next, Taking our previously glued pieces, I'm going to take our remaining little piece of dimensional wood and glue it into the notch or the angle created by the other two pieces. Okay, definitely messier than I would have liked, but we'll let that dry, and I'll repeat for the other one. With the pine pieces being done, I've taken the MDF, turned it over, and drawn a line one and a quarter inches in from the edge on the long side. Mark the center and the two ends. The end marks are three inches from the edge. Next, I'll place one of our finished pieces of pine under the MDF with the large board up and the steps facing the outside. I'm going to center it end to end. And then using anything that's a right angle, that has a right angle, I'll make sure that the board is flush with the edge of the MDF. Once I have it in place, just to keep it from spinning, I'm going to put my clamp on the end here. Normally I'd clamp these pieces down, but just so I can show you how I'm drilling the holes, I'm going to do it this way. All right, so I've got it lined up. 
pressing down firmly, I'm going to take my countersink and drill a hole. Next, I'll secure it with one of my construction screws. and repeat for the other two holes. Now I've taken the MDF base, flipped it over, and placed the MDF circle onto the base. I'm going to position the remaining piece of pine up against the edge. And the reason for doing this is to confirm that I've got adequate distance between the circle and the pieces of pine. It should be roughly one-eighth of an inch on each side. I do. So I'll go ahead and secure the other piece of pine. Now, taking the Lazy Susan, I'll line up two of the attachment holes on the line, the center line, that we've previously drawn and move it slightly until I have an equal gap on both sides. Then, taking a pencil, I'm going to place it in one of the holes in the top piece of metal and create an arc in the center of the big hole in the piece of metal below. Now in each of these arcs I'm going to mark a center point. And this is where I'll drill the two holes with my paddle bit. These holes will allow access for attaching the MDF circle to the Lazy Susan later. Okay, the holes are all drilled. Now I'll take the MDF circle and carefully center it on the base. Now I'm going to take the Lazy Susan, flip it over, and position it equidistant side to side. And I'll check this direction. Okay, next, I'm going to take my Sharpie and going through the big holes, I'm going to find the smallest holes on this side and mark them. There should be four of them. Once the holes are all marked, I'll take my 332nd inch drill bit and drill starter holes. I don't want to go through the MDF, so I put a piece of tape around to tell me how far to drill. All right, got our four holes drilled. I'm now going to take the circle, place it back onto the platter and we're actually going to attach it. And we're going to attach it using 
the number six pan head screws. All right, everything is tightened down. And we can go on to our next step. For this next step, I've returned the Lazy Susan to our base lined up the attachment holes with our previously drawn center line. I'm now going to mark the spot that we're going to drill our pilot holes. And I'll also at the same time mark the other two holes for the drilling. And we'll return the Lazy Susan. Take our number 10 pan head screws and secure it to the base. Finish securing this and be right back. Now, placing the MDF circle on top, I'll use the previously drilled access holes to attach it using the pan head screws. first two screws are the absolute hardest to do. But once you have them in place, The other holes go pretty easily. Okay, we get to see how our final alignment came out. And as you can see, it came out great. Time to prepare and install the Rockler teeth track. Using one of the centering rulers, I've lined it up with one of the holes on the T-track. 
and I'll then mark both ends of the ruler. I'm doing this because I want to have my holes evenly spaced. And then I'll repeat on the other end. I'll cut the ends off with my hacksaw, file them smooth, and I'll be right back. With the T-tracks cut, I'll now take the tracks, line them up, hold them in place, and with a pencil, I'll mark the center of each hole. Done with that, I'll take my 3 32nd inch drill and make pilot holes. I'll then come back, put the track in place. Take my number six wood screws and install the track. When I'm done on this side, I'll flip the cutter over and repeat on the other side. Now for the rulers. I've removed the backing material on the rulers, otherwise they would have sat up too high and interfered with the sliding of the cutting bar. I've marked the opposite ends of the rulers the same distance in as the existing hole, and I'm going to take my prick punch and make a small dent in each one. This is so that I can start my drill bits easily. And then using my 3 32nd inch drill bit, I'll drill a pilot hole. In each. And then I'm going to come back with my 7 32nd inch bit and complete the holes. The reason for the relatively large holes is to provide the ability to perform minor placement adjustments later. Now, I'll center the first ruler towards the edge of our board, and I'll take my 3 32nd inch bit and drill a pilot hole in each end. in the center of each hole. I'll 
I'll then take the number 10 pan head screws. and snug them down. I still want a little bit of movement so that we can do the final adjustment. And once I'm happy with the final adjustment, I'll tighten them in place. Okay, with that ruler in place, I'll swing my board around, take my second ruler, put it into place. I like to have the centering arrows both pointing in. So I said I like both centering arrows pointing in. Next, I'm going to be taking my right angle And flip it over here and I'm going to put it on the outside of my track and line up the zero mark on the opposite end so that I can align my ruler on this end to the same location. Now in this case I'm going to need to do some adjusting back and forth sliding the rulers just slightly until I can get this lined up. I'll screw it down tightly and the rulers will be good to go. And then we'll be on to building the cutting bar. The first step in making the cutting bar is to measure the exact distance between the outside edges of our Rockler T-Track. And I've got 16 and 11 16th inches. I've cut two pieces of the angle aluminum to 16 and 11 16th inches in length and filed the ends smooth. With the half inch size of the bar aligned, I've clamped them together. I then marked one inch in from each end on the top of the half inch size. Then removing the clamps, I drew a straight line on the outside of each of the half inch angles. I'll now take my hacksaw and as I've done here, remove this piece, being careful not to saw into the three quarter inch piece. File everything smooth and move on. I've also cut two one and five eighth inch pieces off the one inch wide flat bar and filed the end smooth. I've taken them and drawn a line lengthwise three eighths of an inch in from the edge. This line will be where I'm going to drill three holes. Three eighths of an inch is exactly the center of the track. This is important for lining up the Rockler hardware and to keep the pop rivets out of the way. Taking the small pieces of aluminum bar, I've marked the center of the line and then made two additional marks 3 8 inches in from each end. I'll make a slight indent on each of my marks with my brick punch. Secure the pieces with a clamp and drill three one-eighth inch holes.
I'll then come back with my 5 16 inch drill bit and enlarge the center hole. And there you have it. You might wonder about this next step. I've placed the two glass cutters between the half inch sides of the metal bars and clamped them together. I'll place the small piece of aluminum with the holes onto the end of the bar making sure to line up the outside edges and to center the holes over the gap in the middle of the bar. I'll then take my Sharpie and mark a circle on the inside of the bar, remove my clamps, And I'll then take my rat tail file, my metal file, and remove this arc on both sides. I'm doing this because if you rivet the bars together and then drill the center hole, the bit grabs and twists the bars out of alignment, making it difficult to make a clean hole. Okay, after reclamping the bars, Here's the hole that we filed. And with the glass cutters in between, I'll take the Rockler pieces, insert them in the end, then place our aluminum bit, a washer, and what I'm going to call a temporary nut. The reason uh, for using the nut is if I were to use the handle, the handle would be too large. You can see that it would keep us from being able to see the holes down here that I want to drill. So once I've got the temporary nuts on, I'll take the whole device, lining up the T-track. I know you can't really see this. Um, I'm going to line up the T-track and slide everything on to the bar. I'm then going to tighten down the nut on this side and then the nut on the other side. And I'm going to line them up with the outside edge of the track. And when I've got them lined up with the outside edge of the track and I have them parallel on both sides, I'm going to tighten them down. Not real tight, just snug them down enough that the pieces will stay in place while I do my drilling. Then I'll take my 1 8 inch drill and gently drill down through the second layer of the bar on both sides. If you'll notice, I put the holes on the outside edge. I'll now take my rivet tool and securing it in place I'll tighten the 
pop rivet in place. And I'll continue for the other four. Okay, got the nuts off. I'm going to take our clamps off, get rid of our glass cutters, and the hardware is all done. Let's cut a piece of glass. I've lined the bar up on the zero mark and clamped it on both sides. I'll cut a four inch piece of glass going over to my four inch mark. And the cutter fits nicely in the groove. A little downward pressure. Voila. This concludes part one of two, the building of the polygon cutter hardware. Part two will address how to find the center of the platter, draw the necessary angle lines, and some basic instruction on use. Part two will drop on March 11th, 2022. Don't forget to subscribe, and thanks for watching. See you in two weeks. Cheers.